Shiny is a part of a rare power pack of American stars that are equally fluent on both stage, recordings and on screen. And she's here with us now. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great today. Now, you've released a new single called Light of the World. Yes. What's that about? Well, it's a holiday song. It's something I wrote um, just to kind of capture the feeling of the holidays. Mm. Uh I didn't make it really that specific as far as that it had to be kind of for one specific holiday because I know people practice uh, different, uh, have different holidays ar- around this time of year, but yeah. um, I just wanted to capture the feeling, you know, um, it's called Light of the World because obviously this is the time of year when all the lights and candles mm. and everything are a big part of it and there's just a magical feeling. So I wanted to kind of, you know, reflect that yeah and what sort of stuff did you write about in it because typically christmas songs will have stuff to do with christmas but because it's a generalized holiday song what type of lyrics are there i used i used some metaphors you know Mm. like there's a place um that i said uh see christmas through eyes of a child um the lyric goes uh enchanted with wonder and smiles, um, see marshmallow snow falling, yeah. sleigh bells and joy, that kind of idea, you know, that's really more about visuals. Yeah, absolutely. How long did it take you to write the song then? Um, I wrote it pretty quickly. I mean, I had some ideas, actually, believe it or not, um, several years back, I had some ideas for this, mm. but I never really fully fleshed it into a complete song until um i would say october of this year when we were in kind of our quarantine yeah and i just had it upon me to sort of put something out for the holidays and in order to get it out quickly i needed to sit down and focus and get it recorded so i just pulled together the rest of the melody and worked with um my friend uh orbel babayan and said this is what i'd like like it to feel like and we did it without ever seeing each other. We did everything virtually, which is kind of how we work these days. So we just, you know, did it all over the phone and internet. How hard or easy was that to work apart? You know, I've, I've been doing this since March. Um, Mm. I'm, I'm literally completing an album as we speak and everything I'm doing is virtual. Um, I think it's just important to find a way to communicate. Um, yeah. I'll send references of sometimes um, sounds. If there's a sound I really like, uh, like a bass quality or particular feel of something. If I want to go for like a vintage style, I'll yeah. send some references and we kind of have that. We develop that kind of language, yeah. um, and it's 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 interesting. It's it's really interesting. Yeah. If there was ever a time to go through a pandemic where we can't really leave our house, it's these days. It really if it is. Happened in 1977. There would be no way any music would get released. Oh, it's so true. I mean, we're really fortunate because I have a you know I have a small studio set up in my home, and I don't know what I would do. Yeah. If I didn't have this opportunity, you know, to express and write about things and be able to reach out to my mm. friends and say, this is what I'm working on. And we do it, you know, I mean, it would be, you're right. Absolutely right. Mm. It would be a very different experience. Did you have to learn how to do a lot of the technological stuff yourself or were you already familiar with that? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, I, um, I have, I have limited capacity with technology, yeah. but I have some really good friends and, um, and helpers that guide me when I'm stuck. So, uh, but you know what, in a way it's been good because like, for example, with the, with the program we record on, which is called Pro Tools, um, mm. I had a very limited capacity with it. I always was the one that was like, I don't want to be bothered with it. I'll just be writing and singing. And, you know, I don't want to be bothered with engineering. Now I engineer all my own sessions. I, I can sit down, record all my own vocals and, and comp them and, you know, email it to the engineer and stuff. So in a way, it's been a blessing because I was forced to learn it, which I was resisting before, you know? 
Yeah. How do you find using Pro Tools then? Because I use it from time to time. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, I absolutely hate it. Yeah. <laughs> Have you managed to figure yourself around it? Well, again, I'm I'm primarily just recording and editing mm. um, and not much more than that. I don't mix. Um, I just get the tracks in a position where they can, you know, be imported by my engineer yeah. who's mixing. Um, so I'm not that sophisticated, but, and I do get stuck. Certainly mm. I get stuck, um, from time to time and I have to call for help, but, um, but I, I like the independence of it, to be honest with you before yeah. I would, I would bring the engineer to my house and say, you know, can you sort of sit there while I'm recording? Or I just didn't want to be bothered. You know, I didn't want to have to, I was in a flow and I didn't want to have to worry about pushing buttons while I was singing. But now I've kind of learned to appreciate it because if I have a part in my head, I really want to get it down. doesn't matter what time of day or night. I just run in there and do it, you know? Yeah. Are you able to figure out problems? Because I've got a problem with Pro Tools where the sound is only coming out of my monitor, my computer monitor, rather than the headphones that are plugged into my computer. Oh, that's definitely something beyond my skill. (laughs) (laughs) I would say that's one of those times I get on the phone and say, what is going on? Please help me figure this out. Yeah. Um, Sounds like it's a, a wiring or a a busing issue, but I don't know how to describe that. I wouldn't know how to troubleshoot that. Yeah. See, I know exactly how to change the output, but when I do, it says you have to close the program and reopen it again. Yes. And then it just goes back to what the output was before. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's when I don't get it. Those are things I don't understand either. Like, when when uh, the computer needs to just be restarted or the program needs to quit. Or the other thing I have issues with is... um, of course, this is really more about a setup, but like when you try to yeah. save a session and it goes into the wrong folder and then <laughs> yeah. I can't find what I was working on and it's inside of another song. I'm like, how did that happen? How did it get inside the other song? I didn't tell it to go there, but yeah. So there are some yeah. moments that gets frustrating. Yeah, absolutely. So how did it all start for you? What was the moment that you realized music was the thing for you? Well, I was kind of born into it. And I just say that because my father loved both my parents, but my father loved music and had a great album collection. And I mean, albums as in like the 12 inch, you know, records and remember them exactly. And had a great collection in the house and had the turntable and the whole thing. And so I was brought up around really good music and he was also a drummer. He didn't play full-time professionally it was more of a hobby but he did play for a few artists here and there um but living where we lived which was in a a southern state in the u.s called arkansas um he didn't have a lot of opportunity to pursue it for as a career so um i would sort of sit kind of like if he was behind the drum kit, I would kind of sit on his lap in his knee with on his knees, and I could yeah. kind of mimic the kick and the and the hi hat, and then I put my hands on his hands where he would be playing, and I pre- you know be sort of pretending to play the drums, um, and I think I developed a strong sense of rhythm honestly, at probably the age of two. Wow. Not that I pursued playing drums, um, but I just really had a you know, well-versed sense of rhythm Hmm. from, from sitting behind the drum kit with him. And then because he had great taste in music, I just, um, I feel like I had good, strong influences, uh, from the get go. Yeah. I was never able to do the bass, the snare and the hi-hat at the same time. Yes. My brain can't do that. Yeah. I, I think drumming is a really unique, you're right. I think it's a certain thing in the brain that some people, Really, it comes naturally. Um, Like I said, if I try to sit behind the drum kit now, I mean, there's a few patterns I can play, but I have to really focus on that. And it's not my strong suit, but I can feel it. I can feel it and my ear understands it um, and I can feel it, you know, but but my brain is more melody driven. So I think most people's probably are. Yes. Yes. And you mentioned Arkansas as well. Yes. How come it's pronounced Arkansas when Kansas is Kansas? I can never understand that. I have 
No idea. I have no idea. I've never understood it myself growing up there. Yeah. But you know what they call people that are from there is an Arkansan. Okay, they that's just it. even so, more confusing. Right. So if you're from there, you're an Arkansan, which is you know going along with the Kansas part. But yeah. you know, and it's all derived from Native American words, and mm. you know, a lot like Oklahoma and all of those regions. You know, they're all kind of coming from Native American words. But I have no idea why it was it was decided that let's call it Arkansas. You know, I guess it's just one of those name evolution things. Like maybe it used to right. be spelled how it sounded and then right, somebody made a mistake right. and spelt it like kansas i don't know exactly i don't know i i don't know if there's a relationship or not hmm. but it's, it's very it's mysterious yeah it was like kansas but there was an arc there <laughs> maybe maybe yeah maybe noah's ark landed there at some point in time yeah, <laughs> although Arkansas is landlocked. Although I suppose a flood wouldn't make a difference, would it? No, there's a river though. There's a river um, from the Gulf of Mexico that runs uh -huh. up. Yeah, there's a the Mississippi River of runs course. alongside. Yeah, yeah. So technically, there is a water source. Yeah, and you know, if the whole world was flooded because of the whole Noah's Ark story, it wouldn't make a difference if you're near the sea or not. I suppose. That's right. I don't. I doubt that that would be the one place that the ark would land. I think it's uh, supposedly it landed somewhere in Armenia, in the uh -huh. in the country of Armenia. I happen to I happen to follow that. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen. Is it Evan Almighty, the one with the ark? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That's as far as my knowledge of the story goes, and I think that's set in America. So. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And of course, none of us were technically alive to really see it, so oh. I don't know for sure. No, not many people were alive, I don't think. <laughs> right. There's probably some species that's lived long enough who was one of the two-by-two two animals. That's right, and they've passed it down in their, in their language. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any musicians that you look up to when you make music and you think, I want to aspire to be like them? Oh, there's so many. Yes, there's so many. Um, so many. I mean, it keeps me completely humble as well, because if I say their names, to me, it's just like, really, you know. Yeah. But um, yes, I mean, probably immediately the people that come to mind are like, um, I would say, Stevie Wonder. Mm. Um uh, I love th these are artists that were songwriters and also seem to come, you know, have a very distinct sound with their mm -hmm. melodies. Um, Stevie Wonder, um, the Bee Gees, pretty much yeah. anything the Bee Gees did. Yeah. Um, again, it goes back to this record collection, mind you. So, <laughs> uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, I would say, um, and then later, kind of moving forward in life, um, Sting. Uh, Prince, um, all all artists that had a very sort of set point of view, extremely melodic, um, lyrics matter, and of course rhythm was distinct. Um, it's hard to define, but I mean, there's just a quality aspect to all of that. All of those artists I mentioned, there's a there's a, a very distinct quality sound, and yeah. songwriting was very important. Um, a lot of times in music these days, we hear tracks. I mm. just I don't know how to define it, but it's sort of like we hear tracks that have been recorded, and then someone comes in and lays some stuff on top of the track. I feel like the artists I just mentioned really crafted songs. Yeah, And uh, the songs can stand alone with a piano or with a guitar. They can still be distinctly performed. So, uh, yeah, those are, those are the first people that come to mind. Yeah. Do you take a lot from those artists and put it in your music? I don't, I don't plan on that, but I know that it's, you know, like they say, it's like a sponge. Yeah. I've absorbed uh, all of their catalog to the point where it's inside of me. And I, you know, sometimes I have to check myself to be honest with you, if I'm writing and go, wait, is that mine? <laughs> is that my melody? Or <laughs> I hope I haven't, uh, I hope I haven't absorbed it too, too closely that it's coming out, you know, too close to something else that I love. Um, uh, 
but yeah, I think it's filtered somewhere in my brain. It filters, you know, through me and then, um, comes out the way it does. Uh, but it's sort of a mishmash of a lot of that stuff. How do you check and know for sure that you haven't accidentally nicked a melody from someone? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I'll be honest there. There are times when I have done a line here or there and I go, gosh, that's a really good line. Are you sure that's mine? And I'll sit there and I'll ponder it for a while. (laughs) And then I'll realize, nope, nope, that's, that came from another song, you know? Um, it's usually when I think something is especially good that I realize I, I, I did nick it, but, um, and not, and not meaning to. So I, I go back and I, and I have to rewrite. So yeah, Yeah, it's tricky. No, it's really tricky. But someone once said to me, look, you know, there's only so many notes on a piano. There's only so many notes and there's, you know, many configurations of those notes. Of course, it's kind of like a, uh, algorithm or something, you know, there's many ways it can go, but at the same time, um, melodically, uh, we're wired, you know, to kind of appreciate certain progressions, I guess. And so you have to be careful, you have to be careful. And as a singer, um, it's even, it's, it's even more challenging because our ears will remember melodies we've heard. And, uh, you know, so, even if you're just sort of ad-libbing or, you know, kind of improvising, you might find that you're mimicking things that you've heard before. Mm. And I don't, I'm not a big fan of that. So I try not to do it. Mm. Um, I'll throw things in every now and then that are familiar, but I, I, I try to steer clear from that too. Yeah. Do you constantly live in a bit of fear that someone's going to approach you and go, you stole that line from me? Oh, most definitely. Well, you know, right now, the interesting thing is on my album, I'm I'm very interested in the, the throwback sound. So some of those artists I mentioned to you mm. um, that might have been, let's say, in the late 70s, early 80s. I'm very interested in that, in that sound where... A lot of the the instrumentation was live and very melodic, um, but still very sort of jazzy R and B. Um, I'm very into that, and so um, that's the direction in a lot of the tunes that I'm doing now. And I'm I'm so I'm sending reference tracks right yeah. to the people that I'm I'm working with. I'm sending reference tracks, and as we go. I will edit along and I'll say, nope, that's too close. <laughs> it's one thing to kind of give a tribute sound in a, in a, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like an, a, an ode to that particular style. Um, but if it's too close, in fact, we were working on something the other day and, and my partner did a, he put a guitar part down and I said, I know that melody. I know that riff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know where it came from. It's too close. So we had to go back and change it. Um, and it, it just, it, it was just like any musician would, would pick up on that reference. And I have, I don't feel comfortable, even though one could say, look, we know it's an, it's a, it's a riff. It's an ode to that. But I was like, I don't even want to be accused yeah. of it. So I said, just, let's just take it down and just come up with something new, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it is tricky. It is, it is very tricky. Yeah. It's not really worth the risk of ending up in court for no you don't want to be in court over it and and i think there have been court cases where people have said look i had no intention of stealing it i was just trying to kind of like make people feel a certain way but even that is misinterpreted sometimes Mm. so yeah. yeah do you have any positive highlights that stand out to you since you've been making music oh yes i mean i've been really fortunate to end up on some of my songs have ended up on some some kind of important feature films. Um, and uh, there was a, a film, a, a song of mine that ended up in a movie called Crash that won the Academy Award. Mm. Um, that was a big highlight in my life, um, especially because at the time that I that I worked with the editor, um, that he also won the Academy Award. His name was Hughes Winborn. Yeah. When I went into his uh, editing room, I, uh, I he was just showing me scenes of the film and uh, not completed and told me where he wanted to use this particular piece of music. And I gave him a whole bunch of stuff and then he selected what he did. And 
long long story short, the movie does really well, ends up winning an Academy Award. So yeah. um, that was a huge highlight. And there have been others that I've I've been lucky to write for. I actually got to write the song for the movie. Um, and that's a different way of working when you actually get to co- create um, specifically for the film. And um, I really love that because it's um, – just a unique experience that doesn't happen always. And you have such a strong point of view to write from, you know? Um, And, and if it's, especially if it's for the end of the movie, it's like, it needs to wrap up the entire message of what the film was about or what you're trying to say. So there's a, there's a challenge to do that, you know, lyrically and, and um, with the sound. Yeah, a lot of people want to make music for films and I suppose it's probably a really good advertisement for your music to have all these people going to see this film and hear you. It is, it is. But it's also highly competitive because as you said, so many people want to do it. I found that a lot of the films I've gotten to work on um, were through friends of mine that were either directing or producing or I was referred to somebody Um, and then, you know, you do one film and then someone says, you know, they, they refer you to the next one. Um, but it is a very competitive area now. And a lot of artists, you know, I think are trying to get that, that closing credit song. So it's, it's a tough, it's a tough, um, fight, but, um, but it's, but it's, it's a, it's a really special thing when you can work on it. Mm. Do you have any more music coming out shortly? I do. I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of, you know, juggling in my head what the next single should be because yeah. I released I released one single in October called Changing Tides and then I came out with the holiday song with Light of the World and Light of the World obviously won't be on the album, but I but the next thing that I'm going to release will likely be in January or February. Uh And I just can't decide which single it should be because I'm going to release the full album, uh, what's looking like probably end of March, early April. Um, And I want the next single to be something that kind of leads you in to where the album is is headed. I have an idea which one it's going to be, but I I don't want to say in case I change my (laughs) mind. (laughs) I've got to decide pretty soon. By the end of the year, I have to decide. So I have a couple more weeks. Yeah, yeah, I have a couple more weeks to decide because I have to turn in turn in the single. So yeah, um, yeah, but it it's likely going to be you know early February when it comes out. Awesome. And are you doing anything special this Christmas or any holiday season that you may celebrate? So we're here in LA and we're in full on lockdown oh. again um, with the pandemic, yeah. and it's pretty bad here right now. So. You know, I'm trying to play my my part and literally not go anywhere. I think yeah. we're, you know, we're at the height of in 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 the U.S. It's like California and specifically where I am in the L.A. area is probably the worst. So uh, I'm just hanging tight at home. I'm hoping to get to be with my family in a couple of weeks um, because we will be quarantining. Yeah. I, I think, you know, it might be safe to be with just my parents. Um, but again, we're just playing it by ear. We're going to make sure that, you know, they let us out. So yeah. I'm trying to respect, trying to respect all the healthcare workers. I have some friends that work in the healthcare and I'm so grateful to how hard they work. And mm. I just don't want to make their lives any harder you know, yeah. by being out on the road and mingling and stuff. Yeah. So, absolutely. Well, where are we able to have a listen to your latest single and all the other music? Well, if people want to go to my social media, which is Shaney Rigsby, uh, it links to all of my uh, my my you know YouTube channel, which is Shaney Music, S H A N I Music, and. Um, yeah, usually YouTube is an easy way to find whatever I've just released and my social media will kind of keep people updated on what I'm working on and what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Shani. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for talking with me. It's been a lot of fun and and I and I wish you well on your technology. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs>